Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Last year, I had a moment where I was visiting with someone who was very, very ill. He was at the hospital, and they weren't aware anymore. It was the last few days, or at least outwardly aware. The medication was being administered, and the family were around. I remember, as happens, looking at the face of the patient, and it was hard to recognize the person that we knew. And the staff that were there were able to make them feel comfortable physically and get the response. But we couldn't help but think, well, where was that person? Where was that essence of the person we knew? But every now and then, deep inside, one wondered, could they hear, as they say, some of the words we were saying picking it up. And so we spent time together, we prayed, and then we said goodbye. And my mother once uh, mentioned to me that when she was by her mother's side in her last moments, there was a certain moment where she thought, this is no longer my mother. This is just a piece of flesh, and the person who was my mother is not here anymore. It's already moved on. And it's really in such circumstances that we, the, the moments of transition that we see how clearly there is something more. There's a neshama, there's a soul to life, an essence. And that feels different than the body that it is interwoven with often. And we see it also at birth when you see a newborn baby, and you see this tiny, barely formed body, but the soul, the awareness inside it, you think, wow. How is it possible that there's so much awareness? Something is looking at me and shining at me so grandly. There must be more to it. So in our parsha this week, the beginning of the Jewish journey, and God speaks to Abraham and he says, Go forth, lech lecha, go away from your land, your native land. Go away from your father's house. Go away from the land where you were born to the land that I will show you. And there you will be a bracha, a blessing. And so Abraham was to go on a journey. And as Rabbi Natan of Nimerov teaches, it was a journey that was telling Abraham, Lech Lecha, go to yourself. And every human being in this world has to go back to their self. Now that's the essence of a human being. The ani, as he says, the I. The ani that is in every single human being. And that's a journey to go and discover who that ani is the nishama. And so Abraham went on a journey, and yes, it was, a phys it was very much a physical journey. He traveled from Ur Kasdim all the way to the Canaan, and he found a new home, and he pastured flocks, and he went to war, and he did business, and he made agreements. But it was also a spiritual journey, and through all of that, he went from being Abraham to Abraham. And he had visions, and through all of it, he strengthened his connection to God. And really what's unique about Abraham's story is that there was no separation between the physical and the spiritual throughout all of it as we read about. The physical was just part of the spiritual and the spiritual was just part of the physical. And for him it was all interwoven throughout the days of his life. And he believed that this was how one should live, that going through the events of one's life, that's where we encounter the spiritual, where we encounter uh, God, that there's no place where God is absent and there's no place where we can't bring our deepest devotion. And so when God was saying to him, be a blessing, he meant it both very materially, and physically, bounty, and he also meant it spiritually, the way we understand the word blessing. And later in the story of Abraham, there's a very interesting encounter where he comes to Avimelech, who's a foreign king, and Avimelech says, God is with you in everything you do. So the commentators ask, well, what does it mean that Avimelech said that to Abraham? God is with you in everything you do. So some answer, or maybe he had followed Abraham's journey, and he'd, saw, he'd seen Abraham walking away from Sodom, the destruction, destroyed cities intact. And he'd seen Abraham going to war and coming out on top. And he'd seen that God had taken note of Sarah and brought them a child in their older years. But others say it was something that he felt. Being in Abraham's presence, he felt something and he was afraid. He was not afraid of Abraham, he was afraid of God with Abraham and that presence that was with him. 
But one can imagine that before he became Abraham, at the beginning of our story, he was just Abraham, it wasn't the case. And it took all that journey, all those different parts, all those different trials, all those experiences, until he was transformed, and more and more of that spirit came to the front. And this is the path of the first Jew, the journey that we're all beckoned to follow, discovering soul. And what's most astounding is that Abraham was over 80 years old when he began this journey, over 80 years old. And the whole journey happened both in the physical and in the spiritual, having the struggles, and the blessings also came through all of that. And really, if you read it, the moments of the spiritual were very broken up, maybe years in between. Markers, just to let him know you're going in the right direction, as he was just living his life throughout all of it. God spoke to him in a vision here, he had a dream there. The covenant of the pieces, the commandment to circumcise, which is bringing together those two sides, physical and spiritual. But he was asked to work through everything in his self and to put his whole being in surrender. And it worked out. It was also what Sarah went through. Not only Abraham, but also Sarah going through this journey. And so this is the path that we are, every one of us, called to follow. A path of blessing, of embodying blessing, of giving blessing, of living through life. And saying it's never too late to take one more step in that direction. To take the first steps of a journey. And to see those two sides of life as just two sides of the same coin. And the blessing comes out of both to emphasize that there is a part of us, a spirit, another part that it's physical, and we don't have to leave them. They can be bound together until we come to that time when we leave this world. And that time when we also have those great markers, finding a new direction, a new destination, a new name, a new part of existence that speaks to us and teaches us about where we need to go for the next part of our life. And so when Abraham passes away, the Torah says, and Abraham breathed his last, dying at a good, ripe age, old and contented, and he was gathered to good. his kin. Good. So he was contented and he was comfortable and blessed in all, Ibn Ezra, the Spanish commentator, says. And when he passed away, it wasn't as anyone else. It was a different kind of passing because of all the places he'd been and who he was. He says, every expiration is a death, but not every death is an expiration. And his spirit was strong, and he was gathered among his people, meaning that he continued to live on, and who he was, his spirit rested upon them, as it still does today, as we pray in the direction of this sole father of the Jewish people, even thousands of years later, watching over us, that we too try to walk on that path. And so we too are enjoined through our lives to bring together those sides of life, physical and spiritual, to weave them together and to put, as we can, slowly over the years, more and more energy into the spirit that animates life. And to see the difference between the two, but yet bring them all together and to give to all the people we know from that spirit to those who walk with us. And as Rabbi Natan was saying, when God was saying to him, Lech Lecha, go to yourself, he was also saying, see every other human being as a soul, see every other person in that same way and your life will be transformed. So may it be for us too, the way we live all our lives. Shabbat Shalom.